Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your blessings over us. Thank you for all you do, for all you've done, for all that you will still do. We are grateful. Thank you for bringing us to church today, for your word that we're about to share. Thank you, because the entrance of your word, Bible says, gives light and understanding to the simple. So that I rejoice at your word as one that finds great spoil. We know there's a lot of treasure in your word, and we are grateful. Thank you, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we share your word, we receive insight. Let somebody's dream come alive again. Let somebody's relationship with you come alive again. Let somebody get a divine idea while listening to this sermon. In this service, Lord, let somebody's sickness be healed. Let somebody's pain be taken away. Let somebody's hurt be mended in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching from. Thank you so much for being a part of this service today. It's uh, always a privilege to bring you God's word. Um, and I'm glad to have you at the other end, um, watching this and listening to God's word on this beautiful Sunday morning. God bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, last week we started out on our series on uh, <clears throat> men like us, right? And if you were not in the service last week, uh, the explanation is basically that uh, we are looking at some selected stories in the Bible uh, with the intent to showing everyone that these people were men like us, right? Um, the kind of battles they faced uh, were intrinsically the same as the ones we face. Uh, the God that was there for them is the same as the one here with us, and the God that helped them um, is also here to help us, right? So that's the idea. If you read um, in James chapter 5, verse 17, the Apostle James wrote there, for Elijah was a man like us. And indeed, he really wasn't Elijah alone uh, that was a man like us. The rest of them were people like us. So we're sharing on these stories, trusting that they will help us to relate better with the Bible and to trust God because it's the same yesterday today and forever. So last week we started out on this. Uh, we titled the sermon, We All Are Stars, right? It, it was a beautiful one. Okay, blessed me um, and it certainly will bless you. So if you were not a part of the service, uh, please after the service get on the YouTube channel, okay, and watch that sermon. In fact, watch the old service, right? Um, this is the conclusion uh, of that first part. Okay, but you can as well listen to this first and then watch that. If you were part of that service, you still want to watch that sermon again and again and invite other people uh, to be blessed by it. I'm sure they will thank you for it. Okay, but today we'll continue um, on this teaching and I titled this one, Preserving Your Dream. Preserving Your Dream. Okay, Genesis chapter 39, um, I'll read from verse 1 to 4. I will pick uh, verses here and there um, and tie it all up together. Genesis 39, 1 to 4, I read from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. Verse 5, so it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Okay, um, I read chapter 41 as well um, from verse 14 to 16. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved, changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've had a dream and there's no one who can interpret it, but I've heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It's not in me. 
God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Okay? Yes. So last week we um, talked about Joseph as a young man, um, how he had dreams that put him in trouble. Um, yes. How his brothers um, <clears throat> detested him for the dreams he had and for the fact that he told them about it. Okay? Um, and how they missed out on a very, very important part of that information. The fact that they were stars all right, in that dream and they were part of uh, the big picture of what God wanted to do. Right? So um, yes, like I said, you can always watch that later. But at this point, we are looking at Joseph from the fact or from the time that he had landed in Egypt. Here we are introduced to Joseph the prisoner, sorry, Joseph the slave. We're introduced to Joseph the slave here, um, serving Potiphar. We wrapped up last week by saying that God was with Joseph, like Genesis 39 says, although he was a slave, he was prosperous and he had God with him. Quite interesting how some of us interpret God's presence. We don't feel God is with us if we are suffering somewhere. We don't feel God is with us if we are still hustling. We don't feel God is with us if all our needs are not yet met. But here the Bible says God was with Joseph and he was showing even in the little things. He wasn't free yet, but within the space he occupied, the presence of God was showing. And sometimes you may want to pay attention to that kind of fact. That yes, you haven't made the old money you want yet, but you are feeding. Sometimes you can't even explain how the food comes. It is God peeping and telling you, I'm still around. Although you are still in school. Sometimes the big thing hasn't happened yet, but God is showing him, himself and his presence through the little ones. And it's just those little jobs you need to remember that God is with you so that you can stay strong till what you really desire comes to pass. So we need to understand that sometimes. And so here was Joseph, had a dream. It wasn't his fault. He just slept and dreamt and then dreamt the part two. And his life went down from there. Because yes, it's a story and it looks simple, but I'm sure you can't imagine the pain of having your own sibling sell you. And here he was, sold as a slave, but then he was giving his best there and the Lord was blessing him, blessed him so much he got a promotion within that same space and his master made him the overseer of every other thing and the moment the master did that, then God blessed everything. Why? Because Joseph was overseeing everything. And that's the Joseph we were introduced to, through him. Things were happening for his employer. But it didn't seem like things were happening for himself because he was still a slave. And if you were a slave, then you are owned. Whatever you own, plus you, are owned. But God was with him. And somebody needs to remember that right now. You probably are not in the best physical shape. You probably are not in the best emotional shape. Someone has hurt you big time. You probably lost some money. A business went south. And I'm saying God is with you. And it's a bit difficult to believe, but indeed God is with you. We did share last week how Joseph could have been killed because his brother said, let's kill him. And only one person said, you know what, let's not kill him. He's our brother. And I imagine that when you're going through all the pain you're going through and you're losing things and you're going through the loss and all of that, I'm sure life was saying, let's kill him. Let's finish him up. Satan was saying, let's, 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 just, let's just do away with him. Let's kill him right away. Let's spoil his life totally. But there's God keeping you, holding you still. And so that you went to bed at night, you woke up in the morning, you're able to stand up, you're able to move, you're able to think, even feel bad. Yes, it's because God is with you and not allowing you to go totally south. And you might want to remember that that may be what somebody here or somebody here needs to hear. I tell you. And so here's Joseph. Life wasn't going the way he wanted. Wasn't going the way he saw it. I mean, even if he didn't have a dream, he could have at least stayed in his father's house. His father wasn't poor. Jacob was doing well. 
Jacob was prosperous. But here I am, a slave. I had a dream. I did not come up with this dream. I didn't write the script. God showed me. And here I am. So, in all of this, Joseph seemed to be suffering due to no fault of his. But if you know the full story, you know that it did came to pass. And you obviously understand that there is a period between when the dream comes and when it comes alive. And so today I want to share with you on how to keep those dreams alive, the things that God shows you, the future that he promises you, how do you keep them alive, is what I want to share about today. And I put this in a few bullet points. The first one, stay faithful to God. Stay faithful to God. Now, what does this mean? See, we teach on faith a lot, but we don't teach on faithfulness enough. Faith means you can count on God. Faithfulness means God can count on you. When he gives you a gift, an ability, a dream, all of those are gifts from him to you. What you do with them is your gift back to him. And between when he gives you the dream and when the dream comes to pass, faithfulness is required. Stay faithful. Mind your character. Stay clean. Important. We didn't read the passage, but right there you would see that after Joseph had been promoted in Potiphar's house, then Potiphar's wife began to see how handsome he was. How beautiful he was. Because yes, when the glory of God covers you, he gives you beauty for ashes. And I'm not saying Joseph wasn't handsome. I'm saying even if he was, he became more handsome. And Potiphar's wife said, hey, let's do this. And you know what it is she wanted to do. Okay? And Joseph said, I, I can't do this. He said, I can't do this evil thing to God. See? It was God he was thinking about in all of this. The God that if you were in his shoes, you would have felt was unfair. That's God. And so he said, I, I can't do this to God. My master has put me in charge of everything. You are the only one he has withheld from me. Of course, because you are his wife. He said, I can't do this thing to God. And I'd usually play it out this way. Potiphar was in Pharaoh's cabinet. Big boy. Naturally, you would expect that the wife had considerable influence as well. And so if Joseph had slept with her and struck a deal, then he could have said something like, you know what, madam, if we're going to be doing this, I can't remain a slave. So are you going to prevail on your husband to set me free? And not just set me free, get me a house in a choice location in town. Okay, and then give me, maybe right now, give me a nice car. But back then, maybe give me some horses or something, right? Uh, but let's say it was in today's world, right? Give me, give me a house in a good place in town and give me one or two cars, right? Uh, and, and we'll be doing this on the study. Okay, your husband won't know and we'll be fine. And like I usually jokingly say, if the woman agreed to that, then J Joseph would then go to church and share a testimony. He would say, praise the Lord, I came to this city a slave, but look what the Lord has done. Now I have a house of my own and I have some cars and I'm no longer a slave. And every other person says, oh, I tap into it. I claim it as well. Yes, that's how the story would have played out. So it looks like, yes, there were possibilities in the immediate for him. But I've always said it. The test of faithfulness is in the immediate sacrifices you can make for the ultimate gain. And so you will see those things come at you. It was just like the story of Adam and Eve, okay? The fruit is right in front of you. Take it, take it. The things right in front of you, the immediate ones are saying, take me, take me. Addiction works like that, all right? He's saying, come for me, take me, watch me now, okay? Do this thing now, drink this thing now. That's where addiction works. And the more you go for that immediate gain, 
the more you let go of the ultimate one. But Joseph said, no, I'm not doing it. Why? He said, I can't do this to God. And so in all of the pain and in all of the bad things happening around him, he still had that consciousness of God. And even if he felt like God was not being fair to him, he was going to be fair. And so you probably understand why he was the one God gave that dream to. Because it takes faithful people to nurture dreams. Faithful people. The people that would sit down and study when they could be out playing. The people that would save when they could be spending. The people that would forgive when they could be fighting. Those are faithful people who know that my immediate reaction may not help my ultimate plan. And so I will ignore what's happening in the immediate and build towards the future. Those are the people God gives dreams to. Those are the people that God can count on. And Joseph stood up to be counted. He said, God, you can trust me. I may not know how this dream will come to pass. I may not know how my brothers will bow or anybody will bow to me for that matter because I'm a slave. But all of that is secondary. What's most important is I will not sin against you. And somebody here has to understand that. I know for a long time we have preached the relationship with God like, like some transaction. If you are good to him, he will be good to you. If, if, if you are not getting it good, then maybe you have offended God. That's why he's not good to you. That's not the way it works. God is ultimately good. And he's saying our being good should not be a function of what we are seeing. It should be a function of our being. Now we are born again. Doing good should be our nature. Pleasing God should be our desire. It's not a negotiation. Oh, if he's good to me, I'll be good to him. No. No. See, for you are a chosen generation. Peter wrote, 1 Peter 2 9, a royal priest to the holy nation, a peculiar people. He said that you may show forth. The praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's your idea. Faithfulness. That God is pleased with your response to what life brings to you. It's critical if you are going to keep your dream alive. So I said the first one, the first way to keep your dream alive, stay faithful to God. The second one, don't allow bitterness creep into your heart. Never allow bitterness creep into your heart. So, Joseph was unfairly treated by his siblings and by his boss. Okay? Um, and in that sense, it would be very much understandable if Joseph began to despise human beings in general. If he said, you know what, I don't want to have anything to do with anyone. Okay? Uh, but then it appears that although his situation continued to change, he didn't change. Things around him continued to get worse, he didn't get worse. And how do I know this? Because we see it in Genesis chapter 39 after he had been thrown to prison. And Bible says in no time, Joseph had become the leader there. Very responsible. He had been promoted there again. Proof that God was with him even in prison. <laughs> and then one fine morning, Joseph wakes up and sees, and it's then Genesis 29, it's a long story, so I, I don't want to read it, and sees two prisoners looking sad. They were the butler to Pharaoh and the baker, okay? And they were looking sad. I remember the first time this, this whole story made sense to me. It, it, was, it was quite funny because, um, so, so here is J Joseph waking up and seeing other people that are looking sad. How does it play out? Because if I were Joseph, 
Nobody would look more sad than me. Nobody has a right to look as sad as me. But then he wakes up and sees people looking sad and he would not mind his business. He would still go to them. The same guy that had a dream that his brothers did not like but still could not keep quiet. He had to go to the brothers and tell them this is the dream I had. It was the same way. He walked up to these guys. I said, why are you sad? Why are you sad? I mean, I would have expected a conversation like, wow, you, you are looking sad. Hey, there's no point looking sad. Cheer up. Listen, let me tell you my story. Then you know that you, you have not seen anything. And you know how we compete with misfortune sometimes, right? Someone tells you, oh, oh, I, I, I have a serious headache. And you say, headache, ah, you're lucky. My, my head is shattered. My own head, shattered. Right? And then someone comes and says, oh, it's just your head, my whole body's in pieces. And we start competing over such things. Right? And so Joseph could have told these people, you don't know my story. Do, do, do you know about a man called Jacob? Oh, if you, if you, if you go to Canaan, big boy, big, he's my father. Ask me what I'm doing here now. See, let me tell you my story. Chapter 1, verse 1. My brothers, my mother, my stepmother, my, he could have gone into all of that. But no, he wanted to hear why they were sad. And then they said, we have had dreams. Dreams. If I were Joseph, then I'd say, dreams. Don't bring it near me. Don't. Don't. I beg you. I was living fine. Then I had a dream. Don't. As much as depends on you, don't ever dream again. But if you do, don't bring it near me. Again, same Joseph. Just like he doesn't learn from the past. He looks at them and says, oh, dreams, tell it to me, tell it to me. Interpretation is of God, tell me, tell me, tell me. And, and I remember looking in my Bible and thinking, does this guy ever learn? <laughs> and then he told him the dream. And so the dreams put him in trouble. Human beings were unfair to him, but he would not stop helping human beings. He would not stop interpreting dreams. He would not stop being good just because life wasn't good to him. I know what they say that sheep don't sink because there's plenty of water around them. They sink because water got into them. And so for Joseph, a lot of things were happening around him, but they were not going to get into him. And as long as this did not get into him, as long as bitterness didn't get in, resentment didn't get in, wickedness didn't get in, unforgiveness didn't get in, as long as all of those things were not in, Joseph was fine. And so whether you sent him as a slave or you sent him as a prisoner or you sent him as a warder, whatever it was you sent him as, you were sure that he was going to deliver on his job and he was going to do very well there. Why? Because the man was unchanged. That was Joseph. And maybe you understand again why God decided to give that to him, that dream, because he would nurture it. He wouldn't change God would not find it hard to recognize him at the time of blessing. Oh, there are some of us like that. Some say those prayers, Lord, if you give me this, ah, they will know. That's not the intention. He is not planning to bless you so that people will know, so that people will bow. That's not the intention. Whatever blessing is given to you is to make this a better world and to help people. And he needs faithful people who would not allow bitterness creep in. To bless. And connected to this is my third point. Be helpful. Be helpful. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus told the story um, or gave the prophecy about what would happen um, at the end of days. He said many would come and they would say, oh Lord, we, we, we are yours. We are home, you know. Um, and he said, depart from me, for I never knew you. He said, for I was sick, and you, you didn't visit me. He didn't say you didn't heal me. He said you didn't visit me, all right? Because healing may be beyond you, okay? But visiting is not, okay? I was in prison. You, you didn't visit me, okay? Again, you typically won't um, uh, visit a prisoner because, you know, usually they did something bad. But Jesus was saying, well, that was me again, right? Um, I was hungry, you didn't feed me, I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. And those people, he said those people would argue and say, Lord, how can we possibly see you in that state and not help you? And he said to them, no, no, it's not the king of kings, you know, that you didn't help. Because if you had seen me as king of kings, with my robe and my crown, you would have helped me. So that's not the test. 
I crept into the lowest of people and hid in them. And that's where you failed the test. And that was it. Because yes, it's giving you a big dream, but it's going to test you with small things. With the little money, you, you, you cannot take your eyes off. You had to take, and it didn't belong to you. With the little offense, you cannot forgive that you had to punish. While God has promised you huge power in future, those are the tests he gives to you. He puts his biggest tests in the smallest people, the smallest situations. And so Jacob, sorry, Joseph looked at a baker and looked at a butler who were out of favor with the king. And he couldn't walk past them looking sad. He had to fix their problem. Not knowing that he was fixing his own two years ahead. You've got to be helpful. The vision God has given to you, the dream God has given to you is huge. But there's a path that leads to that. And the path is from small deeds, little deeds here and there, little pathways that lead to a huge highway. And we've got to be helpful, even to the lowest of people. Be helpful. You might want to write it there in the chat. Be helpful. The fourth one, and then I get to the fifth one and it's a wrap. The fourth one, remember that God is the ultimate planner. I saw this one today and I liked it a lot. Let's think together here. Pharaoh had a dream in which he was going to, uh, he saw there was going to be plenty and then famine. But when you read the old story, you would see that the plenty and the famine did not only happen in Egypt. It happened in the old region, or maybe the old world, right? So why was it Pharaoh that had to have that dream? Why? Why was it the one that saw it? Why? Because Joseph was there. Joseph was right there in Egypt. And Pharaoh needed to meet Joseph not as somebody's servant, but as a deliverer. And so whether or not Pharaoh had that dream, there was going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. Like the Bible clearly puts it, it happened in Canaan. It happened in other nations around Egypt. So it was going to happen everywhere. If Joseph had been in another city or with another group of people, then that's where the dream would have happened. But because Egypt was massive, Egypt was the major nation at that time. It was a huge civilization. Pharaoh was a god. It was the best place for this to happen. And so I'm sure other traders had passed by when Joseph's brothers decided to sell. But they saw these ones that were going to sell to the Egyptians. And they sold Joseph to them. Because even they and the Satan they were working for, were all working for God. They didn't know. And so God had it all planned, and Pharaoh had to have that dream. Just because Joseph had to appear before him, and instead of shivering, had to be helping, and the Pharaohs and the people in his cabinet would be the ones saying thank you. God needed it to happen that way, and so Pharaoh had to have that dream. When some things happen around you that don't make sense, things happen around you that you didn't bargain for, some good, some not so good. When you have interesting dynamics in your life, please bear in mind it is God cooking it all up. You know how it is when you're making food? You have different ingredients you put in it. Each one would probably taste horrible if you ate it alone. You mix it together, put it on the fire, it all comes back as something good. And this is God putting all of these happenings together as ingredients to make you a beautiful meal. And you have to bear that in mind, that God is the ultimate planner. Ultimate, I didn't say immediate. Okay, things happening to you that you can't understand. All of it coming together some weeks ago, we we're sharing about Romans 8, that says all things work together for good, to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Someone here needs to be encouraged. It is not good 
but it is working for good. So Joseph woke up that morning in the prison in, in Egypt. He had interpreted dreams for two people. He had told the baker he would be killed. He had told the butler that he, 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 he would be restored. And he had told the butler, please remember me when you are restored. And butler forgot for two years until there was a need and then he remembered. So Joseph woke up that fine morning. It was a typical morning. He was probably looking at other prisoners and asking, how can I help you? Who else has dreamt today? What, whose dream can I interpret? Woke up in prison. But by the time he was sleeping that night, he was sleeping in the palace. Somebody may say, oh, wow, 24-hour miracle. But this was not. It had many years in it. God is the ultimate planner. And if you want that sudden miracle, then please, Understand that it's cooking many things together now that will lead you to that beautiful place. Be encouraged. And lastly, if you are going to preserve your dreams, lastly, develop your skills. Develop your skills. See, Joseph became viceroy or prime minister, if you will, in Egypt. Um, if you've read that story very well, he became that not because he interpreted the dream. No. That wasn't why. The interpretation of dreams got him to Pharaoh's presence and got him answering questions. But what made him prime minister, what gave him the promotion was not the dream, it was the solution he gave to a huge economic dilemma. See, there is going to be seven years of Plenty. After that, there's going to be seven years of famine. And Pharaoh and all his eggheads and, and his advisors, all of them, had to ask a question. What can we do about this? Because it's never happened before. So what can we do? And the boy coming from prison stands right in front of them. Well, he had a track record of management in Potiphar's house and in prison, right? And then he gets to the national stage. And he didn't say, let me go back and think about it. No. See? Because usually, your wisdom is known by how you tackle certain issues. Not how you go back to study. No. Because life would usually not prepare you for the challenges it's going to bring. And so it shows up right now, and then you have to give a response to it. And so they asked, Joseph, what can we do? And he gave them an amazing response. And Pharaoh said... Number one, nobody else can oversee this than you that brought it. But then Pharaoh said something quite interesting. He said, where can we find such a man, a man in whom is the spirit of God? Pharaoh was not godly. He didn't know God. But the result made it clear that in this case, this guy is not alone. Somebody is with this guy and the person with him is bigger than all of us. Develop your skill. Develop your skill. Somebody said results prevent insults. Okay? They say no result, no respect. Develop your skill. It's good to have a dream. It points you in a direction. But the skill helps. Your ability to manage. Your ability to lead. Your ability to negotiate. Whatever it is, there are skill sets that are needed for whatever it is God wants you to do. And so while you are waiting, develop. It's amazing because in those days, Joseph did not have access to what we have access to. He didn't have access to YouTube where you can watch videos that will help you. He didn't have access to the internet. He didn't have access to speeches, to books, these kind of books. But you do. And while waiting to get to where God is taking you, because indeed he's taking you there. He has shown it to you. Balaam said he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. He has shown it to you. The future is beautiful. But when he gets you there, he wants people saying thank you to you for showing up. He wants people clapping and people saying 
This cannot be you. It is God. There's somebody with you. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. When he gives you a dream, part of faithfulness is you building expertise. In Matthew chapter 25, you see the, the parable of talent there. The master gave talent to different servants. And when he left, each of them had to learn investment skills. And the one that didn't learn it lost out in the end. And so God has given you something. And today I'm wrapping up the Joseph part because we have many characters to look at. You can always go into that study and dig out a whole lot of treasure in it. But God has given you something. It's good you have received it by faith. But you are only going to produce it by faithfulness. And faithfulness means don't go against God. Don't cut corners. Help people. Be a blessing. Don't allow bitterness. Develop your skill. All of this are gathered under faithfulness. You making the best of what God has given to you. I trust God that you will not fail. I trust God that that huge thing he has placed in your hand will not suffer. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare concerning you the grace for faithfulness, the grace to stand firm and to please God consistently. God gives to you today in the name of Jesus. I declare concerning you, you will not lose your focus. You will not get confused. You will not be carried away in the name of Jesus. Temptations will come left, right, center. Receive strength to stand against them in the name of Jesus. For someone here, I declare an end has come to bitterness. An end has come to evil. An end has come to vengeance in your heart in the name of Jesus. You will please God. And in the name of Jesus, your eyes open to the required skills you need. If there's a book you need to read, the Lord will bring you to it or bring it your way. If there's a relationship you need, the Lord will make it happen in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will ask the right questions. You will get the right answers. You will learn the right things. And you will enjoy favor with God and with men in the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful. Let your word come to pass in the lives of everyone listening. Let us all shine through. Grant us grace to be faithful to you. Grace to live as you want us to. Grace to please you in all our ways. And grace to take delivery of that which you have put in our hearts. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, I want to quickly say a prayer for you if you're not born again. You don't have a relationship with God. Um, faithfulness would certainly be tough because really we all want to be faithful, yeah? At least most of us, uh, but it's always a battle, okay, between what we should do and what we want to do. In all of this, the Spirit of God helps and you can't have that if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Can I invite you right now uh, to just put your hand on your chest and say these words after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity. I confess my sins. I ask you to forgive me and accept me as your child. From today, I declare I'm born again. I'm all yours, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, we are grateful for your sons and daughters saying yes to you today. Lord, we ask that you keep them. We ask that you strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Lord, help them to lead lives that are beautiful. Help them to lead lives that will lead many to your light in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, if you said that prayer, congratulations to you. It's the best prayer you can ever say, I assure you. Okay, so you want to send us an email, an email, um, hello at peacechurchglobal.org, or you want to send it directly to me, pastor at peacechurchglobal.org. Um, we want to establish a relationship with you and share with you resources that will help you on this journey. It's a journey we all are on, but we are different faces, and we will be of uh, benefit to one another uh, on the course of this journey, okay? So please send us an email. God bless you in Jesus' name. All right, at this time, we want to give um, our offerings, we want to make our givings uh, to God at this time. On the screen, we have instructions for giving. Um, 
if you're giving within Canada, then there's Interact eTransfer. You can just uh, send your giving to give at peacechurchglobal.org. If you are watching from outside Canada, then we have Stripe and we also have PayPal. Um, both platforms work uh, similarly. Okay, just putting your card information there and then it does the conversion, sends the money uh, down to us. You don't have anything to worry about. Your card details are not registered on our platform, so they are safe with you and um, you don't have to worry about um, um, conversion okay the platform does that for you as well the charges also are on us and not on you so uh, you are good to go okay so thanks for giving we trust God uh, that as you give and even those who would desire to give are not able to give it's well we trust that God will um, help you experience plenty in the name of Jesus okay so thank you for giving as I wrap up um, just uh, a few reminders. Uh, Wednesdays, we have our Bible study program, we call it Alpha, um, 8 p.m. Mountain Time on Wednesdays. Uh, if you want to be a part of this, and I think you should be a part of it, I, I tell you. It's run for three weeks now, and it's been mind-blowing. Really, really, really mind-blowing. A lot of people are getting helped. A lot of people are getting to onboarding and to share with other people. Um, if you want to be a part of this, please get on our website. Okay, uh, scroll down to Peace Clan Resources. Click on Bible study and leave your information there for us um, so that we can send you the link for these meetings. Okay, uh, it is by invitation, so you can, you can just put in your information there. If you want somebody else to also come, just do the same thing for them and then they will hear from us. Okay, good. Uh, also, last week I did mention that we are starting our uh, Sins Church. Again, we are starting that in uh, the next two weeks. So uh, if you have teenagers around you, please. Uh, let them know that we have some good things uh, about to start. I have been meeting with teenagers uh, to set this up because they always uh, would plan their stuff better than people from outside their generation. And so they are giving a lot of ideas uh, that work for young people. So I can assure you that um, if you have uh, someone between age 13 and 17, um, you, can, you can tell them to be on the lookout for this. They will. Be blessed i assure you all right and lastly um yes we have people uh, that have signified interest in serving with us and we are grateful for all of those people again if you want to serve with us uh, you can send an email to hello at christchurchglobal.org or you can get on our website okay and click on service units pick the one you want to join okay and um, notify us right there we have um uh, many opportunities for service, okay, uh, the choir, um, the, the youth church starting, or since church, if you have a gift for that, our children's church is amazing, I tell you, and of course we are um, uh, admitting people into service there as well, we have many other units, just get on our website and see it, and then if you want to be a part of this, we also have a training on that website that is compulsory for every committed uh, person in a PCG, okay, it's, it's a very uh, short training, um, nine classes, three per week is what we ask for. You do a little assignment at the end of it, and that's it. So please be a part of us. We have been praying to receive you. And um, now you've heard the message on faithfulness. Yes, this is the best time to be a part of it. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, so uh, please do not forget these words, and please get on the website. Um, and on our YouTube channel and watch these messages again and again and again till you get the best out of all of it. All right, so that's it from me today. Uh, till I see you again next week. Stay blessed, stay faithful, okay? Up to Junior Church next. God bless you.